with a modern understanding of brain trauma, why would any coach do this kind of training? And the answer is pretty simple. It's what I've always referred to as the art of fighting without fighting. Show me some of it. Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, I am going to be reacting to a TikTok video of a questionable training method. Of course, before we go any further, I would like to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button, and click that little bell button so that you can get notified whenever I release new videos. So let's go ahead and get into the video and then break it down. So as you can see, what this coach is doing is he's striking his opponent, his partners, <laughs> he's striking his partners in the stomach and in the head, clearly as some form of conditioning to try to prepare their body for impact. And then he has this little bullshit fake exchange with um, his uh, last student. I'm going to just head this off by saying that this is a disgusting display of irresponsible instruction that could result in lifelong brain damage to his students. What he is attempting to do here is the practice that we call conditioning in the world of martial arts. He's trying to get his students prepared to receive blows and prepare their body to take impact. Conditioning is just a way of saying that you are exercising in a way to prepare your body for the specific activity that you are training for. I doubt many people would say that a swimmer is somehow less or more athletic than, say, a weightlifter. However, their physiques are very different because they have conditioned their bodies to the activity that they're trying to do. And there is something to be said about receiving blows to the body to condition the muscles in the stomach uh, to be able to take that impact. And also just teaching the student how to hold their stomach in a way that they don't actually get injured when they get hit in the stomach. And just like all things, this can be overdone. Generally at a reputable boxing gym or mixed martial arts gym, they may do some body conditioning that involves blows to the body, or more often you'll do it with a medicine ball where the person is con in control of the actual impacts that are happening to their body where they drop a medicine ball on their stomach and on their ribs. There's also a really fun game that you can play where you're kind of pushing or, or, or throwing the medicine ball at each other's stomachs and kind of like taking the impact and grabbing it and then throwing it at the other person. It helps you practice the timing of flexing your abs and breathing out. And of course, because the medicine ball is heavy, it also helps work with your triceps. It's not the shots to the stomach that are bothering me. It's the shots to the head that are bothering me. When I was coming up in the martial arts world, there was a great misunderstanding of how brain trauma actually happened. There is a condition that we call CTE that is extremely serious, that can result in memory loss, it can result in uh, impaired thinking, but even more scary, it can result in depression and suicide and violent thoughts or violent actions towards other people. CTE can actually change your personality. And the thought used to be that CTE was only ever caused through a series of concussions. And so as a result, as long as people didn't get concussed, really a lot of coaches didn't worry about brain drama. However, as the medical field has progressed, um, they have determined and discovered that actually any blow to the head can potentially cause CTE. I remember when I was coming up in the martial arts world, there was this ridiculous thought that there was like a number of concussions you could have before you had to worry about it. That I'd have coaches that said things like, well, you know, you can have seven concussions and be fine, but you, you gotta watch out around the eighth concussion. And so some coaches would even keep track of how many concussions their students had had so that they would know when to tell them to stop. But the truth is that like any blow to the head could potentially cause this. We have even seen symptoms of CTE in careers that don't involve direct blows to the head. For example, people who teach all-terrain vehicle driving who are like always getting that bumping up and down, up and down of uh, coaching people on how to drive these things uh, have, have shown signs of CTE in their later years just from the jarring motion of riding on those vehicles. 
martial arts is already dangerous enough it's already enough of a risk to our brain in just sparring and competing there's no reason to increase the risk of damage to your head by letting some jackass like this just hit you in the face with a modern understanding of brain trauma why would any coach do this kind of training and the answer is pretty simple it's what i've always referred to as big dick martial arts it's effectively just a training method that this guy is doing because it makes his students feel like they're badasses who've done some really fucking hardcore training and it makes him feel like a badass because he's beating the shit out of his students we can even see this kind of egotism in this last exchange that is clearly scripted where his student fights back and he throws a kick and his student goes flying to the floor if you watch that kick that kick is clearly a shit kick there's no reason why his student would go flying to the floor like that. This kind of training is clearly just somebody trying to make a training method that makes people feel like they're warriors, like they're badasses, but ultimately, uh, he's just being really fucking stupid and irresponsible. When studying martial arts, you are going to take blows to the head. You are going to be hit while sparring, and especially if you're competing, you're going to be getting hit in the head. When you are actually sparring or you are fighting, you have a lot more protection towards your neck. Uh, your hands are up, so your opponent has to hit around your hands. And furthermore, the vast majority of the blows in sparring and even in actual competition are glancing blows because you are moving your head. This kind of training where his students are just eating these punches to the head and you see their head whipping back and forth is remarkably dangerous, remarkably irresponsible. One thing to remember, and this is crucial, Everything that you are is contained within this little space that is your skull. If I chopped off your arm, you would still be you. If I chopped off your leg, you would still be you. If I destroy your brain, that's it. You are gone. Do not let people do this kind of training to you. It's absolutely insane. And the only reason why anyone would do this kind of training is because it makes them feel like a big, strong man which means they probably don't have their egos in check if they need to be punched in the face to feel like they've done something with themselves. And if you live in the Indianapolis area and you would like to come train with me, all the information to do so is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. And if you live too far away, we actually offer Zoom classes on Wednesdays. Once again, you can sign up for those on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.